there was a lot that happened tonight. We've been waiting for this debate. It's been, you know, will they debate, will they not debate? Now it's here, and the question was, how would he perform given the stroke that he experienced back in May? He actually addressed it off the top in part. Let's play it. And let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm gonna keep coming back up. And this campaign is all about, to me, is about fighting for everyone in Pennsylvania that ever got knocked down, that needs to get back up, and fighting for all forgotten communities all across Pennsylvania that also got knocked down, that needs to keep, get back up. Hmm. When you think about that, and the idea of how he turned it into a discussion really about, look, I am the every person. One, was that effective to you? I mean, that wasn't the moment people were talking about him struggling, frankly. We'll show those in a minute. But the idea of, of talking about it in that context, you were waiting for this debate. Was that persuasive to you as a way to set the stage? Uh, no, it really wasn't. I mean, I thought somebody should have invoked the mercy rule about 20 minutes into the debate. Yeah. Uh, Fetterman, in my view, I, I don't know if it was the stroke or if he's just a lousy debater or if he doesn't understand the issues. He had a very, he was flustered, he was confused. Uh, he, he should not have been out there. Um, I, and I, I've had a number of people say, why is this guy even on the ballot right now after that? Now, I don't know that debates matter that much, but if people watch that, you're, they're gonna question his capacity to serve. The bar was set very low. It should have been set lower. Mm. Well, on that point, let's the right, I mean, you talk about this too, Allison, the bar was set so low in the sense of I mean, Dr. Oz, you know him because he's a television personality. Right, he knows presence. how to do TV. He's been doing it for two decades. I mean, that's what John Fetterman was saying. But this was, I think, in a different category, mm, it sounds yeah. like. So let's uh, listen to a moment where um, John Fetterman struggled, seemed to struggle. I'm also having to talk about something called the Oz rule, that if he's on TV, he's lying. He did that during his career on his TV show. He's done that during his campaign about lying about our record here. And he's also lying probably during this debate. I want to bring civility, balance, all the things that you want to see because you've been telling it to me on the campaign trail. And by doing that, we can bring us together in a way that has not been done of late. Democrats, Republicans talking to each other. John Fetterman takes everything to an extreme. And those extreme positions hurt us all. Okay, Alyssa, your thoughts as you watched that? So listen, Dr. Oz has the advantage of a career in TV. He's an excellent communicator, but that wasn't why he won tonight's debate. He hit on every major issue that voters are focused on. The economy, crime in Pennsylvania, huge issue, energy. He had substance behind him, and there was this unifying general election message. I, I want to be careful because I think some of the most consequential leaders in history have had different kinds of disabilities. I don't think it should preclude someone from serving. But what we saw today was someone who is not ready to be in office. And the lack of transparency leading up to this, I think, actually shocked people watching it. Like, I found it extremely hard to watch. Um, and the question that I found myself asking is, is the way that he's struggling a result of the stroke, or is it because he doesn't have a grasp on the issues? He was asked a very direct question about his position on fracking. He could not explain why he fundamentally 180 changed his position on it. And the voters deserve to know that. I want to play that because, honestly, and Tobin, I want to hear your take on this as well, because what we've played so far, frankly, for the audience who may have not have seen these debates, I don't know that it's conveying that level of difficulty answering the questions as much as we're talking about it right now. I want you to respond, Tobin, but let's play the moment that you're saying, Alyssa, that really is suggestive and illustrative of the point you're making. I always believe that independence with our energy is, is critical and we can't be held, you know, you know, ransom to somebody like Russia. You know, I've always believed that Energy independence is critical, and I've always believed that, and I do support fracking. I do want to clarify something. You're saying tonight that you support fracking, that you've always supported fracking, but there is that 2018 interview that you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. So how do you square the two? Oh, uh, I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't, I don't, I support fracking, and I stand, and I do support fracking. Tobin? Yeah, the fracking answer that he gave was one of the lower moments in mm. a generally tough performance. I think the clip that you played immediately before that, him sort of trying to lay out the 
the Oz rule, was an attempt to uh, guard against what he knew was going to be a lot of incoming fire he was going to take. Oz obviously came in attempting to portray him as radical. It was very clearly going to be the strategy. I think he knew he was not going to have the nimbleness to be able to respond to those in real time, and so was trying to make a sort of blanket effort to, uh, to, to uh, you know, uh, create an issue around honesty and the sort of validity of Oz's attacks. But, you know, for anyone who is coming into this totally undecided, if you drop a voter into Harris Strike who had no engagement with this beforehand, it's hard to see them coming away terribly, terribly convinced by, mm. by Fetterman there. And we should mention that he, he was using closed captioning. So he was, using, he was able to read um, the questions and the words rather than just hearing them because he's admitted he has auditory processing issues now because of the stroke. And, you know, Charlie, it's interesting. I've interviewed him many times um, as lieutenant governor. And he sounds he sounded different before the stroke. I mean, it, yeah. in the interviews, he was much more um, sort of clear spoken than what I'm hearing now. Here's a moment where they're talking about their differences on the economy. So let's play that. I can make the difficult decisions, as you do in the operating room as a surgeon. I'll make them cutting our budget as well to make sure we don't have to raise taxes on a population already desperately in pain from the high inflation rate. He has never met an, air, uh, uh, an oil company that he doesn't swipe right about. You know, he has never been able to stand up for working families all across Pennsylvania. You know, we must push back. Inflation has hurt Americans and Pennsylvania's families, and it has given the oil companies record profits. I'm glad you played that, Allison, mm -hmm. though. I mean, just for your answer, because I, I feel like we, we've been hearing a lot about all the things he did wrong. And I, I have, you know, no skin in the game in this particular race, but I am I'm glad we played something that did demonstrate. I didn't think that it was something that was um, so problematic compared to the juxtaposition that we sowed earlier. Well, you know, I, it just seemed like these answers were not particularly coherent. And I'm being kind when I say that. You know, on, on energy, Pennsylvania's the second largest gas producing state in the nation. I wanted to hear him explain his evolution. He couldn't do it. I support fracking. I support fracking. Well, he didn't, but he couldn't explain it. You know, we wanted to hear him talk about crime and his role on the Board of Pardons. And I didn't hear anything that explained his rationale for some of the decisions, the highly questionable decisions that he made there. He wasn't able to articulate what it was that he stood for. And that's what was really troubling to me. And again, I, I, feel, I almost feel very sorry for him that, you know, he's in a bad, bad way. But as a voter, I'm looking at this saying, how can I vote for somebody who I don't think is ready to do the job? Well, what do you think, Tobin? I'm curious, because you, you worked for, um, you know, the Vice President Joe Biden at the time. And truth be told, he was criticized at times for not being as nimble as he once was, obviously different reasons. He was criticized for the way in which he would articulate certain points. And there was always a bit of wind in the face of then candidate Biden on that very point. When you're looking at it from that perspective, do you see the same concerns that they're talking about? I think the strengths of President Biden as a campaigner line up in some ways with the strengths that that Fetterman has still as a campaigner, despite his impairments. I think he connects at the level of values with voters. I think his campaign is connected uh, uh, or made that a, a very intentional focus. His kind of blue collar branding, I think, does make some of the lack of polish a little bit forgivable to some of the voters who in are inclined to support him. And I think, frankly, in this debate, despite what was, you know, I think objectively a rough performance by Fetterman, people who were inclined to be sympathetic to one candidate or the other, I think, probably came away with enough to. You know, sort of reinforce you don't think it's where changed the momentum. Uh, I mean, you know, given how many people genuinely watch these things, it's hard for me to see this, you know, being a big inflection point in the polling, given how tight things are. I mean, negative partnerships very powerful. Mm. I think people have a lot of reasons to be where they are. This is the battle for control of the Senate. I think even more than the competence of the candidate, that's going to be. But the to, to put a finer point on this discussion, Joe Biden's very prone to gaffes. I've been critical of gaffes and misstatements, and sometimes struggling to get, you know, different sentences out. But I've never been concerned that he has a grasp on the policy issues, even if I disagree with his policies. This was a candidate where I was genuinely unclear if he understood how to address crime, how to address the economy and inflation. And then when he did uh, try to lob attacks on Oz, they didn't land. Um, it didn't seem like he had a full grasp. He went after him on he wants to cut Medicare and, um, and Social Security. Oz was ready for it, and he wasn't able to articulate. So I'm not a Pennsylvania voter, but the momentum was very, very clearly on Oz's side here. You know, and it, we should note that there's already been over 640,000 pre-election votes that have already been cast. I'm one of them. And you, you're one of them. Yeah. And 73 percent went to have gone, they think, to Democrats versus 19 percent to Republicans. So if it's the idea that, look, 
the debates don't matter. I wonder to what extent this works, but there has been a really big issue, as we talk about this a lot, on the issue of immigration. I mean, for those issues that have not usually been the talking points in the state of Pennsylvania compared to other places, mm -hmm. they address that point tonight. Listen to this. I understand what legal immigration offers us, but the completely a porous, open nature of our border, which John Fetterman supports, has created a humanitarian crisis with cartels profiting, with human trafficking operations. They take the money, they buy narcotics from China and bring that into our country, and it's making every state a border state. Pennsylvania is already a border state because we're top three in the country in fentanyl overdoses. I believe that uh, a secure border is can be compatible with compassion. I believe we need a comprehensive and bipartisan solution for immigration. That, that's what I believe. I don't ever recall in the Statue of Liberty did they say, you know, you know, take our tired huddle masses and put them on a bus and use cheap political stunts about them. What'd you think, Charlie? That's a that was a good. That was his best answer. That was that was one of his better answers of of the night. Uh, but again, I, I, I just am, I'm just still astounded. I'm still stunned by what I witnessed tonight. And that, uh, you know, and this is, and they should have had more debates, by the way. I was one of the people, and this is a big state. There should be at least two debates, probably three. One in the Philadelphia market, Pittsburgh market, and then like tonight in Harrisburg. But he didn't want to debate for an obvious reason. And we, we witnessed it tonight.